President Biden is set to visit Baltimore on Friday, this after last week's collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The president's senior advisor spoke to America Decides yesterday about the administration's plans to help rebuild. We have federal, state and local partners working away. This is a really challenging undertaking. It's 110,000 tons uh, when you add up the vessel and the, the bridge debris, 110,000 tons. So there's a lot of work to be done. Meanwhile, there is some new progress in the effort to reopen the port. Some boats are now passing through for the first time since the deadly bridge collapse last week. For more on this, I want to bring in Nicole Skanga. She is following the latest on this story from Dundalk, Maryland. Nicole, uh, good morning. What more can you tell us about this temporary channel and the ongoing effort to clean up there? Good morning, Chanel. There is a new alternate channel open for business for smaller vessels that can operate in shallow waters. The deck there just 11 feet, but it's a 264 foot wide passageway that hugs the northbound still standing remnants of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And it uh, again allows some of these smaller vehicles, tugboats that are pulling smaller commercial barges, uh, some of the first responder vessels as well, traffic to and fro around the bridge. That started just yesterday at 3 p.m. Now, in terms of what's actually happening with the wreckage removal right now, we know that the first piece of wreckage was removed overnight, a 200 ton piece of debris on the north end of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. There is another piece of debris, 350 tons that is poised to be removed. But right now, crews dealing with some inclement weather. Not sure if you can see some of the rain and torrential downpour behind me, uh, but crews here uh, facing a storm system that's been moving through the region just out of, of an abundance of caution. They have hunkered down uh, the cargo ship Dolly uh, in order, you know, four anchors on the stern of the ship and a tugboat nearby in order to keep it in place. And I do just want to show you this of the wreckage. Sonar images released early this morning by the U.S. Navy showing what officials are calling a chaotic wreckage, just a mangled web of steel uh, that is smashed underneath the Patapsco River. And that is what is keeping this process uh, at bay here. Uh, officials say that this is an incredibly dangerous and incredibly precarious operation. Wow, these images, Nicole, are just stunning. And it just does show, again, what a big job still lies ahead. And until everything is fully operational, Nicole, uh, what are officials doing to mitigate the economic impact there? Yeah, absolutely, Chanel. There's, of course, the salvage efforts, but there's also uh, the economic fallout here. And just to give our viewers a sense, there are 15,300 direct jobs that are tied to the Port of Baltimore, uh, 140,000 jobs that are linked to port activities. That all adds up to about $3.3 billion in personal income over the last year. Now, just yesterday, uh, Baltimore and uh, the Small Business Administration at the White House announcing that two new storefronts are opening in the Baltimore area to assist small business owners who are applying for loans for the short term. Uh, this is for revenue loss connected to the bridge collapse and businesses can apply for up to $2 million in loans. So those storefronts up yesterday, those will help some businesses here, but Maryland legislators also crafting an emergency bill to help some of those port workers, uh, folks we've been hearing about like the longshoremen with local 333, uh, a financial recovery program in the works for those individuals uh, to get some relief when the paychecks don't come in. Chanel. Okay, Nicole Skanga, thank you.